and welcome! Today is yet another requested video and I think it's an absolutely awesome request. I was asked to do a top 5 on best uh, intermediate snake. You know, when you no longer find yourself on a beginner's level and you want to move up and get uh, some snakes that are a little bit more difficult and a little bit more, what can you say, more interesting or more time consuming <laughs> than the beginner snakes. If you haven't yet seen my top 5 beginner snake, I can highly suggest that you go check out that one. Especially if you are a beginner and you are wondering what kind of snake would be the best one for me. Of course I have linked to it right down in the comment section, you can also see it up here. But let's get back to the top 5 intermediate snakes. There are a ton and ton of different snakes that you can go for if you find yourself on the intermediate level. And of course I can only talk about the ones that I have experience with. So of course there's going to be a whole lot of other snakes that you can also go for. But today I have chosen the top 5 that I definitely think is worth checking out. The first one is of course the boa constrictor. Now that is a snake that I talk about a lot. And it's also a snake that I did list in my top 5 beginner snake because I think that it's it's, uh, it can be a beginner snake, but it's also one that you can go for if you're feeling that you want to step up from, for example, a corn snake. Now the boa constrictor is an amazing snake. The reason why it's listed on this intermediate uh, top 5 list is because of the size of the boa, which means that these guys, they do get pretty, pretty big. It's not unusual for a boa constrictor to reach a size of 2.5 meters. Like you can see in the case with Baby, she's 2.7 and she's a big, big girl. So you really have to know what you're dealing with with if you're thinking about getting a boa constrictor. Of course I can recommend that you get one from the hatchling size or maybe one or two, then it won't be as big as the fully grown boa. But the boa also do require quite a large terrarium, uh, it doesn't really require that much in a setup, but the terrarium really do need to be a big size for this big snake. So that's my recommendation number one, the boa constrictor. Recommendation number two is the emerald tree boa. Now that is a snake that's so, so beautiful. The emerald tree boa is such a stunning snake. And the reason why I've put it on this list is because that if you are thinking about getting one and you do have some prior knowledge of snakes, this is definitely a snake that you can go for. These guys are incredibly beautiful to look at, but they really do require the husbandry to be on point, which means that they do need quite high humidity. They will also need the heat to come from a lamp from up on top of the terrarium instead of a heat mat underneath. And that is simply because that the emerald tree boa is a tree living snake as the name is saying so it spends all its time up on these branches which is also a must-have in your terrarium and beside that their temper is in general known for being a little bit aggressive now I haven't had any issues with Asmodan but in general the emerald tree boa is not known for being that nice it's also what I would call a look at snake and not a handle snake which means that this snake really do have a fragile tail so it's best to just leave it in a terrarium but if you can agree to that then I can totally recommend the emerald tree boa is such a beautiful snake, such a stunning snake and it will be a crown jewel in your reptile collection. Recommendation number three is the rainbow boa. When I first saw this snake, I fell completely in love with it. It was so beautiful. These guys are so stunning to look at. They also do get quite a decent size. And I've also heard that these guys should be pretty easy to handle and pretty easy to deal with. The reason why I've not put them on my beginners list, but I've put them on this intermediate list, is that these guys really do require something when it comes to husbandry, which means that the humidity needs to be high. And I've also heard that they can make quite a mess. They're not the easiest snake to keep. So so you really have to be on point with your setup. It's a beautiful, gorgeous snake, I can totally recommend it. If you're totally into spending a lot of time making sure that your setup is correct and you fall in love with the snake, of course, then the Rainbow Boa is definitely a snake for you. The fourth snake on my list is a snake that I actually thought that I would never have, but now that I have it, I've fallen completely in love with it. It is the false water cobra. The setup for these guys are not that difficult. They don't require any special lighting or anything like that, but they do require quite a, a large amount of water so that they can bathe. Because as the name says, these guys, they are part aquatic snakes, which means that they really enjoy being in water. These false water cobras also do reach a pretty, pretty good size. And also they're very, very fast. Their temperament is not known for being aggressive per se but they are a very very curious snake and they're very fast which means that you really have to be on your tiptoes when you're having these guys out and also there is the little tiny detail that they are venomous so if you are into these venomous snakes and you really want your adrenaline pumping and you want to be on your tiptoes the false water cobra is definitely a snake for you they are incredibly beautiful and they also have this hood 
uh, that they can spread, if you can say it like that, which is also where they get their name from. Although you really don't want to see them doing that because that means that they are they are stressed and they are angry. <laughs> but all in all, I can totally recommend that one. If you are looking into maybe getting venomous snakes, this is a really good snake to start with. Now the fifth snake on this list is the scrub python. Now this is a snake where you really have to take your precautions because not only does it get really really big but it also has a temper. The scrub python is in general known for being very very angry. Not saying that it's gonna attack you uh, at the moment that you open your terrarium but the chances are pretty pretty good that it will. We've had scrub pythons and we've also been dealing with uh, some bigger specimens and you really have to know what you're doing with these guys. They're so beautiful, I really like them. But I'm also kind of like, uh, I really like my snakes to be uh, more docile than aggressive. When it comes to setup, they don't require that much, so that should be fairly easy. But what I'm really pointing out here is the temperament and the size of this snake. This is not a beginner snake at all, and if you are really getting into getting one of these scrub pythons, I can only uh, urge you to be prepared, because these guys, they're strong, they're fast, and they're mean. But other than that, they are very, very gorgeous snakes, and I'm definitely getting one of those too. that's all for today that was my part one of intermediate snake i really do hope you enjoyed it if you have any comments or questions just put them right down in the comment section and of course i would love to hear what snakes you think is appropriate for an intermediate level snake carer <laughs> did that make sense at all you know what i mean guys just put it right down in the comments please give the video a like so i know that you like what i make it really does mean a lot to me and while you're at it just hit subscribe on that channel thank you guys for now and bye bye